بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته طلابنا الأعزاء نبدأ محاضرة جينيتو يوراينري فيسجولة بداية the objectives of this lecture by the end of this lecture the students should be able to define fistula, list its possible causes, describe the different types, demonstrate on the minicon the examination of a fistula, interpret the results of investigations, and determine the treatment suitable for various case scenarios. By definition, the genitourinary fistula is defined as an abnormal communication, abnormal communication between the urinary, including the ureters, bladder, the urethra, and the genital system, the uterus, the cervix, and the vagina. So any fistula is an abnormal communication between two epithelial surfaces. The most common type of genitourinary fistula is the vesico, vesico, it means the bladder, vaginal fistula. So it is the fistula between the bladder and the vagina. You see here, this is the uterus, and here is the vagina, and here the bladder and the urethra. The close proximity of the urinary system with the genital system explains the, the risk for developing such a fistula. So this is the vesico-vaginal fistula, which is communication between the bladder and the vagina. Here we see the vesico-vaginal fistula can be high up in the vagina and can be in multiple levels here and here. And there could be a urethro-vaginal fistula. The pathophysiology, why fistula happen? First of all, there is injury. With injury, either trauma or surgery, there will be tissue damage. Then after the damage, necrosis will occur and inflammation. Next step, there will be new vessel formation, the angiogenesis. Then three to five days later, there will be fibroblast formation, the fibrosis. And then there will be the maturation and organization of these fibroblasts into the original tissue, which is the remodeling. يعني حتى تحول هاي الفيبروبلاست إلى الخلايا transitional epithelium مثلا للبلدر أو سكوميز epithelium للفجينة. So this is remodeling to form the normal tissues. Any disruption in this sequence will cause fistula. إذا هذا healing process in natural way disrupted by infection, trauma, poor tissue quality. This will result in abnormal communication between the urinary and the genital system. So fistula tend to present one to two, three, two, three weeks, usually after tissue injury, a time during which the vulnerable, uh, the fistula formation. So the healing environment can be affected by, exa for example, hypoxia, ischemia, malnutrition, radiation, and chemotherapy. The age of the wound eventually epithelized and a chronic fistula tract will be formed. If the masarat a remodeling process, it will mature scar tissue and fibrosis will be formed. If the remodeling masarat in normal way, there will be chronic fistula tract due to fibrosis. The classification will we have an anatomical classification. Here we have the urinary tract, ureter, bladder, and urethra. The genital tract, vagina, cervix, and uterus. The most common one that what we see it is the vesico-vaginal fistula. Others, urethro-vaginal, vesico-urethro-vaginal, urethro-cervical, urethro-uterine. These are extremely uncommon. Vesico-cervical, vesico-uterine. This usually happens with cesarean sections. The malmarida sewi cesarean sections of why monkey to the vesico uterine fistula. Urethro vaginal, if it involves the urethra and the vagina, urethro cervical, and there is no urethro 
uterine because of the, uh, the distance between the urethra and the uterus, so unlikely to communicate. The Zyco vaginal fistula can be characterized by their size and location in the vagina. We, high, ha, we have high vaginal when it is a proximal in the vagina, low vaginal when it is distal, and we have mid vaginal level. For example, post hysterectomy, usually it is high up in the vagina and near to the vaginal cuff. You see this picture, this is a utero vesical fistula. And here we have, this is the vesico vaginal fistula. This is high up vagina uh, fistula. So because, for example, surgery, methane hysterectomy, or cesarean section, here we have the fistula of high level, okay? Here, uh, if it is in the vaginal fornices, يعني high fornix, here we high level. In the mid vagina, this is uh, mid level. And lower down, the urethral vaginal can be uh, lower level fistula. The etiology, congenital uh, fistula, uh, is rare and fistula usually associated with other renal or urogenital abnormality. Mungkin abdominal wall defect, mungkin uh, epispadius, and uh, so on. The acquired fistula, most vesico vagina fistula usually arise from a trauma, either obstetric trauma or pelvic surgery. The obstetric trauma, this constitutes more than 90% of cases in developing countries. Because in developed countries, as we know, high parity, uh, frequent deliveries, short interpregnancy interval, poor tissue uh, quality, and poor general health. So this may result in obstetric trauma. Because this could be either obstructed labor or malpresentation. For example, the patient is fully for three or four hours, this head or presenting part will press on the vagina and the bladder for a long time. This will result in necrosis of the tissue. And then later on, there will be sloughing, typically after a few days. She presents after three to four or five days after this obstructed labor. When there is a sloughing of this necrotic tissue, there will be fistula. Or they use instrument to facilitate labor. For example, forceps or ventus delivery. Or uh, they do the curettage during instrumentation. There is a trauma to the genital system in addition to the urinary injury. So it will result in fistula. So either by obstructed labor with necrosis and sloughing of the tissue or damage by instrument, either in obstetric, for example, forceps or ventus or during gynae procedures, and by cesarean deliveries. Cesarean delivery due to proximity of the bladder and the uh, uh, uterus, there may be fistula formation. And usually this is of complex type. There will be complex high fistulas. Pelvic surgery in developed countries, atherogenic injury during pelvic surgery, mostly is hysterectomy for 90% of the zyco vagina fistulas in these countries. Fib prevention, intraoperative recognition of lower urinary tract is imperative. The important thing is that I the trauma or the injury at the time of surgery. This is a very important step because we can suture it and there is minimal morbidity for the patient. The important thing is that I can the injury at the time of surgery. I can do the repair with minimal morbidity. المشكلة إذا ما شخصتها the presentation will present later after days and here there is a problem there could be uh, necrosis in the tissue infection so the surgery will be more complicated and the morbidity will be more to the patient so intraoperative recognition is very important أنا بالعمليات أشوف الفوليس كافيتر لازم clear urine a check the field mati maku a urinary leakage. This is very important. Aw mumkin in no ahne bil amaliyat nitrus il methana an tariq al folis kavitar by a fluid normal salan mumbif la methylene blue. Ida sar edna a shek in no sar edi trauma lil bladder. U ashuf any leakage of this uh, fluid into the operative field. 
Next, we can use uh, cystoscopy. We can visualize the bladder and to detect any injury. So that can be sutured in the same session. Radiation, you know, radiation induces end arthritis. For example, the patient is a case of cervical malignancy or uterine malignancy, and she receives radiotherapy. Radiotherapy will not only destroy the malignant cells, it will destroy the healthy tissue also. So, will result in tissue necrosis, and later on, there will be sloughing and fistula formation. Most damage following radiation usually develop within weeks or months, but fistula associated with radiation, especially if there is a minor tissue trauma, not significant trauma, may present up to years after the original insult. Malignancy, tissue necrosis, and deterioration is commonly associated with malignancy. المريضة مثلا سوينا لها هيستريكتومي وطلع الهيستوباثولوجي كارسينوما of the uterus. The patient may present later with, with fistula. So put in mind that malignant fistula is a possible. So by history, you can diagnose this or recurrence of fistula. سويت لها عملية ونشحت عملية وبعدين صار عندها recurrence again. This is suggestive of malignancy. Trauma and foreign body, for example, sexual assault may cause a trauma and cause fistula. Foreign body, for example, may have a prolapse or have a pessary. The pessary is uh, larger than what we need for this patient and causes a pressure on the vaginal cuff and the bladder. And this will result in tissue necrosis and fistula formation. And the foreign bodies can be inserted during surgery. For example, women with stress incontinence having a weak sphincter, and I'm planning to do a urethral bulking agent injection, for example, collagen injection. If I go through the urethra and then I inject the collagen into the uh, urethra and into the vagina, and this will result in injury, and this foreign body will stimulate inflammation and possible fistula formation. Miscellaneous causes, any uh, disease characterized by uh, invasion to the surrounding tissue and uh, interference with normal tissue may result in fistula, for example, lymphogranuloma venereum, tuberculosis, pelvic inflammation, Crohn's disease, and so on. All these are risk for uh, fistula formation. The clinical presentation, the zycovaginal fistula usually present with unexplained continuous urinary leakage from the vagina, usually after recent operation, or after difficult labor, obstructed labor, unexplained continuous urinary leakage, Depending on the size and the location of the fistula and the amount of urine also uh, vary. So if it is a large size fistula, there will be a large urine amount of urine loss. If it is a small size fistula, there will be small amount of urine loss. Put in mind that fistula is usually termed the true incontinence. يعني هنا بهاي الحالة الفستula هي تعتبر the true incontinence. حقيقة إن المريضة تكون Incontinent, you can't get rid of the drain. Occasionally, a small volume intermittent leakage is mistaken for post-operative suppress incontinence. So, any new onset urinary leakage should be examined thoroughly. In some cases, the fistula is very small, in which the atlas is closed, and the patient is incontinent. When she is coughing or sneezing, there will be increased intra-abdominal pressure. We might know the bladder here, just from the abdominal cavity, this pressure will be raised within the bladder, so there will be urine leakage. So you should differentiate between a small fistula and stress incontinence because both of them will present with urinary leakage on exertion or on coughing. Less specific symptoms, there could be fever, pain, ileus if it is post-operative, yani after the surgery, the patient will develop peritonitis, abdominal distension because of urine leakage into the peritoneal cavity. 
and bladder irritability ممكن تجي المريضة وياها frequency and urgency due to infection and cystitis. The cycle of vaginal fistula usually present days or weeks after the initial surgery. However, following hysterectomy may present one to two, three weeks, especially if it is a small trauma. If it is big trauma or big injury, it will present earlier. However, some fistulas, for example, radiation-related fistula may present uh, later, and it may take years to be uh, shown clinically. The diagnosis by history, the present complaint of the patient, the obstetric deliveries, prior surgeries, Previous management of fistula because recurrent fistula may indicate possible malignancy or possibly there is a poor tissue, so the healing will be uh, impaired. Any malignancy, any radiation received should be taken in the history. By physical examination, visual inspection during physical examination, usually we use the SINS specula to examine the whole vaginal wall and to look if there is any uh, fistula. And if we see a fistula, we should specify the location and the size of the fistula. Uh, we can use a translucent cascose uh, speculum. Cascose speculum is a translucent or a metallic, because the vaginal wall again will be useful in the examination for fistula. Vaginoscopy, in this uh, procedure, we inspect the vaginal wall properly using a laparoscope, نستخدم telescope with camera, or by hysteroscope with a translucent plastic speculum. We can inspect the whole vaginal wall to specify the size and the site of any uh, defect. During the evaluation, we should differentiate, again, the fistula uh, from stress urinary incontinence. Measurement of vaginal fluid creatinine content will be of help. Sometimes I see fluid, but I cannot differentiate whether this is cervical fluid or it is urine. The creatinine, as you know, present in all body fluids, but in very small amount. In the urine, the average creatinine level is 170 milligram. هذا المعدل 170 milligram per deciliter. Any creatinine level above 17, if the creatinine is above 17 mg per deciliter, this, is, this fluid is suggestive and mostly it is urine and we should look for any fistula because sometimes the fistula is difficult to be inspected. يعني مرات إذا الفستولة كلش صغيرة صعوبة أشوفها. Okay? فممكن the measurement of vaginal fluid creatinine will be of some help. Dye installation. In this procedure, the bladder installation of visually distinct solutions such as the methylene blue, لونه أزرق يكون, or indigo carmine, اللي يكون لونه تقريباً برتقالي. This we can specify the site of fistula by the tampon test or the three swab test. In this test, we put the three swabs in the vagina, here high up and in the middle and in the low one. And we inflate the bladder with methylene blue. We ask the patient to move around for 15 to 30 minutes. And then we remove the swab. And here, according to the side, if, see, if I see the upper one is colored, we have a high up fistula. If the middle swab is colored, I have a mid vaginal fistula. And if the lowermost one is uh, stained with methylene blue, this means the, that we have a low vagina fistula or urethro vagina fistula. Put in mind that the patient, if the patient is having suppressed incontinence, this lower one swab will be also colored. لذلك السواب الأسفل واحد ممكن يتلون بالمثلين بلو إذا المريضة عندها سترس incontinence. So this will help us to differentiate the site of the fistula. Will site a hamita ala mud aaruf the approach of repair. If the fistula lower down, I can do it vaginally. But if it is higher up here, it is difficult, and I may need laparotomy to perform the repair. 
Sister, erythroscopy, this is important to visualize the bladder and visualize the urethral orifices and to assess the bladder mucosa viability. Intravenous urography to assess the integrity of upper collecting system and if there is any urethral environment, we will see the hydroureter and possibly hydronucosis. Retrograde pilography, this is by cystoscope. We uh, visualize the upper urinary system and the same diagnostic uh, value as intravenous uh, urography. Put in mind that urethral, urethral involvement in the fistula is sometimes very difficult. Yani, the ureters, once it is involved, we should put in mind there will be fibrosis and there may be back pressure on the kidney and possibly hydronephrosis later on. So we should properly assess both urethral orifices. Voiding cystic urethrography, this is dynamic testing. We use a fluoroscopic material and then on the screen, the, the patient passing urine, and we can see if there is any reflux into the ureter and the upper uh, system. The treatment of genitourinary fistula. First, we have conservative treatment. Occasionally, a small fistula may close it during continuous bladder draining using indwelling urinary catheter with antibiotic use. احنا ليش هي اصلا تصير الفستيولا؟ لانه البلادر الاوت فلو مالتها مسدود باليورثرال سفينكتر. لذلك اذا اكو اي ويك بوينت ممكن يصير عندي يورين ليكج خلاله، اوكي؟ فاذا اني فتحت السفينكتريك ريزيستنس حطيت لها فولي سكاتيتر والبلادر ويل بي كونتينيوسلي دريند، اوكي؟ This will help to heal the a small defect with use of antibiotics. Generally, with larger fistula, the healing will be difficult and mostly will require surgery. If the fistula is a small, two to three million, this is likely to heal after two to eight weeks of transurethral catheterization. Hapalafolis catheter, وممكن يساعدها إذا الفستولة صغيرة إنه يصير عندها healing. If the fistula not closed within four weeks, it is unlikely to heal. So here, this means that there is collagen deposition and epitalization and with the formation of fistula, it tract. لذلك بعد ما أصور المريضة راح تستجيب conservative treatment. ممكن تحتاج surgery. The surgical technique, the classical surgical technique is that through the vagina, I excise the fistula tract. I excise the tract. Then after excision, I suture the bladder. Then I put a two layer of fibromuscular tissue in between. And then I close the vaginal tissue. Abdominal transperitoneal, if the fistula is difficult to be repaired, or if it is higher up, this may require supravesical urinary diversion. ممكن نحتاج إنه نحول the ureters into another implantation site and this will require an abdominal approach. Laparoscopy, you know, uh, it is involved in every surgical procedures and this surgery can be done by laparoscopy. Interpositional flap. The important thing is that between the two uh, tissues, I should have a good interpositional flap. يعني لازم بين البلدر وبين الفيجانا لازم أكو a normal supporting tissue. إذا التشو deficient, weak, for example, radiotherapy, أشوف التشو كله poor health, poor healing, ممكن نستخدم flap اللي ممكن تكون omentum or adjacent uh, fatty tissue so that this will provide good blood supply and will allow both tissues to heal separately. يعني لازم نفصل الفجاينة عن البلدر in order to heal so that every tissue will heal on its Urethrovaginal and other genitourinary fistulas, this is uncommon, usually following surgery, for example, anterior cold porophy, so we an injury to urethra, urethral diverticulectomy, okay. Sometimes during labor, obstructed labor will press on the urethra. 
Here there will be again continuous urine leakage into the vagina or the مريضة ممكن يكون stress incontinence. Again, the treatment is that uh, excision of the fistula tract, repair of the bladder or the urethral tissue, then tension free repair, يعني بدون ما أسوي tension على التشو على مدة أحافظ على blood supply to be healed. Post-operative bladder drainage. ورا ما سويت ال surgical repair لازم أحط لها فولي سكاتيتر with antibiotic. على مدة يصير proper healing. Sometimes when there is urethrovesical fistula and it is below the level of the sphincter, okay, the patient may be asymptomatic because the bladder is closed by the internal sphincter and only there will be urine douching when passing urine. Thank you so much.